Okay, we're going to begin our service this morning, and uh, I don't, we haven't had one quite like this the last Sunday, and then I didn't have to be doing this this morning, but anyway, we want to welcome everyone that uh, is able to listen and be part of our service today, even though you can't be with us this morning. But anyway, uh, we're going to go to Psalms chapter 91 this morning, because that psalm, you know, we're living in some trying times, some difficult times, times maybe we've never experienced before, but you know, when we go to Psalms 91, we're going to find direction from the God who created this world, amen? And you know, I praise God for that, because you know, sometimes we find we need something to reassure us, right? And living in this time right now, we can go back to Psalms 91. And, you know, we know that God loves us. God created this world, amen? And you know, we find that He so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And you know, we find that Christ came and He died for us. He shed His blood for us. Not only did He shed it for our, for our salvation, but for our healing. And you know, this morning, it was because of that love. And you know, we find out that we can experience that when we ask Christ to come into our heart. When we ask Him. You know what I mean? He so loved us that He has given us that opportunity to know Him. And as we go into Psalms chapter 91, you know, we can find that we are in trying times. And I would just like to begin with uh, Psalms 91, and it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And you know, as we look at that verse, we find it says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And you know, a lot of us all know Psalms 23. And when you go over there, we find, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Why? Because He is with me. Isn't that neat? And you know, he has chosen to be our shepherd. And you know, we can choose to be his lamb. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and you know, this morning, this is why I, I really would like to just kind of bring Psalms 91, because you know, every day, we, can, we, we pray that prayer. We stand on this. You know, we know this world is not our home. We're just passing through. Praise God for what Christ did. We're not just passing away but we're passing through. Amen? Amen? Okay. You know, this expresses, as we look at that first verse, it expresses the security of these who trust fully in God. It assures us that God will be our refuge and that we may seek His provision in times of spiritual and physical danger. Note, as I look at this part, one of the things I just kind of jotted down in my, in my notes this morning was, note, who dwells in the shelter of the Most High? This psalm offers the security of God's children, those who commit themselves to the will and the protection of the Almighty, and daily seek to dwell in God's presence. How many with me would say that, you know, it's in the shelter of the Most High. That's where I live. Amen? That's where I live. That's where I want to be. How many know that, you know, He leads us green pastures, right? <laughs> anyway, we could go on and on with that. But you know the second verse is, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And it, we're going to go to Romans chapter 10, and I just want to go there this morning because there we find this is how we get to know Him. You know, there's an application that needs to take place in our lives, amen? And so it says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe and are 
we have the other verses with it? Right. Are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As Scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of okay. all, and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that verse 13 is the one I really wanted to bring. For all that call upon the Lord will what? Be saved. Be saved. And you see, you know, we, we make a choice, right? But you know, it's so neat when we believe, right? And you know, in our heart, and we share with our mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, I think it, it is so neat because of those verses. And if it's, let's go back to Psalms 91, and we're going to drop down to the 14th verse. It says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I'll rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Isn't that awesome? But I want you to note there, what does it say? Because he loves me. You know, it's amazing that we can have a relationship with God that touches our heart. A relationship with God that touches his heart. It's a heart to heart. You know, we, we look at God's one that created marriage, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that we are the bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. Amen? You know, we find marriages can stand on a true love, right? It's an intimate relationship. And that's what it's talking about here. I would just kind of like to just look at the footnotes that I have in my Bible and, and you know, when we look at those first two verses, the four names for God in this psalm describe different aspects of his protection. Number one, it says the Most High. Notice that in verse one. Shows him to be greater than any threat we face. The next word, describing him, is the Almighty. It emphasizes his power to confront and destroy every enemy. And then we find the next word, describes our Lord. The Lord assures us that his, his, that his presence is always with us. And then the next one, and I have to put my God, amen, <laughs> expresses the truth that God has chosen to associate a, an intimately with those who do what? Trust Him. We put our trust in Him. Do we know what tomorrow holds? No. Do we know what today holds? No, but my God does. Amen? Mm -hmm. And you know, that's where I can put my trust in Him. Let's, we'll drop back now in our verses this morning. And as we go back, I'd like to kind of drop down to verse 9, because we, we, we don't have a lot of time in which to be able to do this this morning. So anyway, but verse 9 says, If you make the most high your dwelling... Even the Lord who is my refuge, how many know that I have a choice to do that? You know, God could have sent his son and he could have forced us to be a slave, right? But he chose us to be a son, a daughter. But he has given us a choice. Then it says, if we make that choice, it says, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you. And you know, when I look at that part, I think, wow, it is so, it is so awesome what he says he'll do. He'll command his angels, you know, if we make him our choice. And then I go back and I look under, you know, I, I look at that verse, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Notice the covering here. And then, you know, as we go down, we can go on down with that deal, but when we look at verse 10, it says, then no harm will befall you. No harm will befall you. You know, what that really speaks to me is that nothing can happen to a faithful servant 
without my God's permission. Amen. Amen. Nothing can happen without my God's permission. I think that's pretty wonderful. Amen. <laughs> and you know, God never leaves us to walk through anything alone. But he walks with us. You know, this truth does not mean there will never be unpleasant times or difficult times. You know, we live in this world, you know, right? Yeah. We live here. But you know what? God has came to walk with us, to walk through it with us. I would like to read, beginning in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 39, if we could go that way. Because I think this is kind of neat. Especially verse 28, I think it's something we need to stand on. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. He works for the good for those who do what? Love. love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. How many know that every one of us has been created with a purpose? You can go back to Ephesians chapter 1, and even before this world was made, he had a purpose for us. And I can't, you know, that is awesome to think about, isn't it? <laughs> God's given us a purpose. Okay, let's go on. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and that these he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. I want to stop there just for a moment. There's a verse in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to do what? To forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know what? How many know that promise is for everyone? It's for the whole world. Amen. Jesus died for every single one. You know, if I went and bought a load of horses or a load of cows and they were all mine, boy, they'd go where I told them to go, right? But you know what? God bought you. He purchased us. But he has given you a choice. What pasture do you want to live in? Amen? Right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that exciting? I, I'm not going to buy a load of cows and give them that opportunity. But anyway. What then should we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how? Will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and he also is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship? or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We're considered as sheep to be, what? Slaughtered. No, in all these things we're more than conquerors, through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, we might find ourselves being kind of locked in, missing to do a lot of things right now, but you know what? That can't separate us, right? <laughs> Amen. And you know, this morning we can still gather in His presence. You know, uh, going back now to Psalms 91 again, he says he will command his angels concerning you. And I just jotted down a couple of things here concerning those angels. Notice, they take note of all who seek to dwell in God's presence. And they guard the body, soul, and spirit of these believers. How many know we're made of body, soul, and spirit? Amen. The protection includes all our ways. There is no limit as long as we walk in the shadow of the Almighty. And you know, we go back to verse 1, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. You know, we have to come to the place that, you know, I live in the shelter. I live in the shelter. 
How many know that when these things come to pass like this, I can go back to the Word of God. I can go, I can go to Him and say, Lord, I don't understand this. It's bigger than me. But Lord, I'm just putting my trust in You. Isn't that awesome? Even if we shouldn't even, even if we don't live through this, guess what? God's already got a house built for me in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I can be right with him. Amen. Do I want to die? No, I don't want to die. <laughs> but I sure definitely want to go to heaven. Amen. And you know the peace that we can have when we know who he is. And then we'll go back to we'll go back to verse 12 in Psalms 91 this morning. And that's such neat. It says they will lift they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Who many, who, who's put stones in our way, spiritually speaking? The old devil does it. And sometimes we even do it. Amen? <laughs> Don't we? It says you will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. I'm not so sure that I want to face a, a real lion, but you know, that's speaking of who? The devil. You know, it could be even speaking of anything that is bigger than we are. Right? Whatever enemy it might be, whatever it might be, it can be like facing a lion. Amen? You know, Daniel had the experience of being put in a lion's den. And God kept the lion's mouth shut. Amen? <laughs> great. Isn't that great? <laughs> and you know what? We might get it when we're in this world. We've got a devil to face, right? You know, the Bible says when we see these things come to pass, we need to be looking up. Not looking around here. Amen? We need to be looking up. What does that mean? You know, sometimes our, our, our lives are so filled with earthly things with earthly plans, with earthly thoughts. But you know, we never need to forget this life, this world is not our home. We're passing through. Amen. Amen. We've got a job to do here. Yes, we have to keep up this physical body and our families and all that kind of stuff when you think about that. But at the same time, we are to be you might say a reflection of God's love. A reflection of the light of Jesus Christ. And you know, a lot of these things come upon our world and come upon our lives that would tend to try to shadow that out, right? You know, uh, the 12 verses is they give us support as we face spiritual enemies. If we could put up Ephesians 6, I'd like to look at verses 10 through 13 there. Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Where does our strength come from? It comes from the Lord. You know, we get strength in our muscles and so on by exercise and so on. How do we get the strength from the Lord? It's by our relationship with Him. Amen? <laughs> Praise God. Through His Word, through prayer, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, he says, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. And you know, it's so important that God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit. He's given us His Word. He's given us everything that we need. And you know, we can look at the world around us. And you know, what do we see? We see people that have left off reading this Word. We've seen people that have left off gathering together. You know, right? What have we done? We've left off that relationship. 
You know, sometimes we are all, lots of, people, lots of times we say, oh, I know about God. But you know, I know about our neighbors, some too. But do I ever visit with them? How well do I know them? There's one thing to know about something, but it's another thing to know them personally. And to be able to experience the love, the care, and to be able to share, you might say, the love that God has given us. In 1 Peter 5, beginning with verse 8, I think it's another good place for us to go this morning. It says, Be alert and of a sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him. How do we resist him? Standing firm in the faith. Because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. And the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You know, there's a lot of things that people do in times like this. And maybe there's a lot of them that say, well, yeah, you can read the Bible, but God, how's that going to help? You know, it's when we take the Bible to heart. It's when we have a relationship with God, we take it to heart. In that, in the first, in the verses 14 through 16, we read them once, but it says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I'll rescue him. Because he loves me, we can put that in there again, I'll protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I'll be with him in, what? Trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I'll satisfy him and show him my salvation. You know, Jesus says because, we find that word, because Jesus loves me. You know, this morning I would like to encourage you, put your name there. Put your name, I am the me. <laughs> How do we put our name there? By asking Christ to come into our heart. Amen. By being all His. And you know, it's amazing how God gives you the ability to love Him. And, and we could go on from there, and I, I just kind of wrote down in my notes here, and we'll kind of get ready to close with this. Because they love Him, He promises to, he promises to come to their aid in times of trouble. God's protective care is a heart that is intimately attached to the Lord in gratitude and affection, right? So how do I, you might say, receive this? How do I, you might say, dwell there in that shadow? You know, it's because I love Him. I've experienced His love for me. And I love Him. And I'd like to just close this morning with that 23rd Psalm because it's, it's so important. Notice, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know, when I read that first verse, I ask myself, have you asked Him to be your shepherd? You know what? In times like this, we need to be assured. <laughs> we need to ask Him. And we know that He will be if we ask Him. He makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness. In His name say, You know what? I'll, my prayer is every morning, Lord, I want to go where You are. I know that He goes with me. And I know I can be with Him. But you know, what I'm saying is, is Lord, I want to be where You are. I want to be part of what you're doing. I want to be, I want to be your hand, okay? <laughs> I want, I want, anyway, I just, I just want to be there, okay? Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, how many know there's a lot of people walking through the valley of the shadow of death today? This thing is worldwide. It's something bigger than most of us have ever seen. And yet we know in history that Things like this has come about before. But you know, when you read the book of Revelation, 
You know, the Bible says that we don't have to be here during that tribulation. And I don't want to be here. There's a whole lot of worldwide things that's going to be happening. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. And I like the last part of that chapter where it says, Surely goodness and love will follow me. When? All the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> that house he's building for us in heaven. We'll be able to dwell there forever. In Jesus' name. And I would like to encourage you, if you have not reached out to him, if you have not made him your shepherd, do it today. You might be home. You might be by yourself. You might be wherever. But you know what? You can reach out to God wherever you are. And this morning, you can be one of His. This morning, you can belong to Him. This morning, you can dwell in the shelter of His Most High. Isn't that awesome? And you know, that fear can go away. That worry can go away. And peace can be in your heart. Because God is with you. He has made a way that you might know Him. A way that you can trust Him. And that's what we are standing on today. Amen? Amen. And yes, we're dialing 911, but it's not an earthly phone number. It's a heavenly phone number. Amen. All right? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Wow, we didn't go quite to 11. <laughs>